Now we have before us today Mr. Nuhuribadu, a, a police officer, former chairman of uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in Nigeria, who was first uh, kicked out of office on a flimsy excuse that he was going for training in a remote area of Nigeria near Jos. Uh, and after that, he was demoted by two ranks down. And after his demotion, on the day of graduation from this training he went for, the authorities in Nigeria kicked him out of the graduation uh, place. And then he was finally, on the excuse of his refusal, according to President of Nigeria, to go to a posting that uh, was given to him in the police, uh, kicked out of the police finally. He's recently been in Oxford, and now he's here in the U.S., uh, Washington, D.C., but today we have him uh, in New York. So I'm just going to do a very quick one. Mr. Nuhuribad, welcome to Sahara Reporters. Thank you. Yes. The question that perhaps nobody's going to ask you, but we'll ask you, is that you were a very uh, effective, feisty, and very, very popular anti-crime fighter in Nigeria. But the question and the allegation and accusation that flows all the time to us is that, you know, when you were there, you did a good job on some people who were regarded as the enemy of former President Obasanjo, and you did a bad job on those who weren't uh, his enemies. Well, I don't think that's true. I, 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 I disagree completely. Uh, the most difficult thing to do, probably to fight corruption, especially in a country like Nigeria, where corruption not just endemic, but is responsible for literally everything that has really turned the country to what it is today. The entire system has been taken over by corruption, everything. The fact that we are able to even achieve this little, I think tells you a story. But more importantly, those who are making the accusations, and I've thrown this challenge several times, tell me who is the person that we've gone after simply because he disagreed with Obasanjo, or who is the person that we left simply because he's a friend of Obasanjo. Okay, let me pick on that. They will look at Andy Oba, domestic aid to Obasanjo, who came on board the presidential jet with $170,000, gave it to a woman in Portland to buy a Mercedes Benz, and for 5000 of that went to uh, farm equipment that went to a passenger himself. People said Andy Oba was nobody in California a few years ago, and suddenly he's a multimillionaire. That's one specific example. The point you are making is like reducing it to the point that an individual who was never in any official responsibility of either head of an agency, government, he was not even a minister, he was not a governor, there was no money from federal government or from any government in Nigeria that was allocated to him as an individual to manage. What we were doing then in Nigeria and what we tried to do was to follow and track government money and see where it was going. This is somebody who was an advisor to Oba Sanjo on domestic affairs. Oba, Andy Oba never had an office anywhere. I'll, I'll, pick, you up, I'll pick you up on that. Now. I'm, not going, I'm not through with you yet. I'm, I'm, I'll pick you up on that because what I want to find out is if you say because he's not a minister, he doesn't control a budget string, does that mean that he does cannot it? be corrupt? Of course, we even investigated on the basis of what came out of that incident when you said that he came to the U.S. and then he was uh, uh, caught with something. Well, as at the time, I personally wrote to the authorities in the U.S. We followed it. We requested and demanded for such documents. What we found out eventually revealed that there was a transaction between him and a lady, which I cannot remember exactly, and that uh, to buy something and so on and so forth. And there was an, a sort of proceedings in the U.S. To, to their own justice system against that particular person, against that particular lady, we requested for if there was anything that could come out from Nigeria, where we will follow on and then continue with what took place in the U.S. here. The authorities never gave us anything. But that the U.S. authorities? Yes, 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 I did it, I did it. I investigated Andy Uba in Nigeria. I followed literally all, all where we had leads in terms of whether he had any bank account, or where money was being kept, 
we followed thoroughly and I can assure you if I had gotten something that I would have built a case on, I would never have shied away from it. Assuming that he was, for example, heading an agency, it's easy to go in there and see what he was doing there. How was he handling the office? How was he managing the whatever resources that was coming to the office? Or how was he relating in terms of his own official capacity and responsibility with all those who he was relating with? It would have been a lot easier. It, if we were to do an honest job, and which I think to some extent we did, was to even investigate the person who was his own boss. He was an assistant to an individual who somehow was responsible for not just on the but the entire government, which we did as well. We investigated thoroughly, and at the time when I left office, of course, we had I've even taken the statement of Obasanjo as part of the investigation that we took. He was a president of Nigeria, and I took his own statement personally, and I still is still there in the records of the EFCC. There was a time you said this number of governors are corrupt. You said it openly in the Senate, and. You excluded, of course, the current president, Mr. Yarad, from some of the people who you are judged to be correct, corrupt. But when he declared his assets, there was a lot of discrepancies about how much he had a few years ago and how much he had uh, as at the time he became president. You know, so the, of course, the accusation has been that this man was protected because he was sanctioned as a candidate for the ruling party, and you overlooked some of these discrepancies. Did well, you I feel like you were part of any process that polluted the political process to allow individuals like this uh, emerge? What we did, and this is from the bottom of my heart, we worked hard to help change the way things were done in our country. We worked hard to ensure that we have a new order. We worked hard to see that if possible we could get good quality leaders who will be in charge of our own affairs. And in the process of that, well, we did a lot. And we were able to somehow, but not, I don't know whether ultimately we succeeded. But uh, certainly we leave that to history. Uh, on the issue of uh, Umar Yaradua, I wouldn't want to talk about him at all now. Because he is the president now. Because what is ongoing now, uh, certainly is at the center of it. And I will not want to be answering. But he's talking about you in the well, in media. He, he said, look, you know, this guy is strong-headed. He refused to go for the posting when, you know, well, he, knows he seems that. to be very aware of, of your plight, even well, though he said he doesn't have a hand in it. Uh, he is a president, and he is our president, and I have that respect for him, for that office. I do not think it is right for me to be answering him, on the particularly public, not really now. More importantly, he said himself, he said that the Almighty God will ultimately judge. He knows what that means. He knows if he is telling the truth. Recently, uh, President Obasanjo was somehow mentioned in the Halliburton crisis, mm. and the current leadership in Nigeria said they are very interested in Halliburton. And, uh, you know, how, and of course you were interviewed, and you said, well, the U.S. authorities know who are, who is involved. Do you think the Nigerian authorities are really interested in getting to the root of uh, the Halliburton crisis, or is there any political reason why they have interest in Halliburton and not in Siemens and not in Wilbros and not in London cases with the board. The case of Halliburton is simple. We followed the case. We made it possible. The first time the Halliburton matter came up, um, came out from the French authorities, I personally went in 2004 to meet the, with the investigating magistrate. I went to him several times. I desperately wanted to uh, get their own support then. Uh, somehow they refused to. They refused to support me, they refused to help. I decided to take the matter out. I made it public, and then I went to the uh, UK authorities. I also approached them for support and assistance in the investigation, because one of the individuals happens to be an, a, 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 an English uh, citizen, that is uh, just Tesla, Jeffrey Tesla. Uh, they, the, the UK then somehow found it a little bit too remote for them to get in because none of the company belongs to UK and somehow not much happened in the UK. I decided to approach the US and then uh, from that period of 2005, we worked with the US authorities. We identified literally most of the people that at that time and we investigated them. We took their statements. Almost, most, almost all the suspects. So, so if I put it to you, so you know the suspects? 